And of course, everybody is always looking for the solution. And sometimes I think people tend to frame it in terms of the silver bullet solution that's going to overturn the existing monetary paradigm, drain the swamp, end the military industrial complex all in one swift fell blow. And maybe all people will have to do is donate a few dollars or something like that and it'll all be <laughs> finished. R Newsflash, reality doesn't work like that, no. Uh, I think the real solutions are going to be a very long series of steps that we're going to have to take to lead us towards the promised land of, uh, of freedom from the cha chains of slavery that have been woven around us over the course of generations. They are not going to be uh, cast off all in one blow. That's, I think, a, a Hollywood predictive program that we've been given our entire lives. As part of trying to get off of that enslavement grid, of course, one of the ideas that I keep coming back to is the idea of agorism or agorism, depending how you want to pronounce it. And what is that? How do we implement that? How do we get off of this fiat money uh, system? It's, as I say, going to take a lot of steps to get from here to there. And one step that I would like to put in front of you today that is an easy step that I think we can all take this month is the Agorist Alternate Economy Exchange on June 19th from 9 to 11 a.m. at Franklin Park in Spokane, Washington, and then recurring every other Saturday at the same location and time. The Predator class has done an effective job of limiting our choices and using the threat of the monopolized force of the state to coerce the masses to obey arbitrary rules that discriminate and then separate the vulnerable from participating in the norms of society. This counter-economy exchange is about stepping outside of that system of control set up to benefit the predators and those they use to accomplish their end game. It's about connecting with your neighbors and community and finding out what everyone's needs are and then as free people through voluntary interactions meeting those needs for one another without using this corrupt and unjust system literally being forced on us with the threat of extortion or violence for non-compliance. Hey friends and fellow human beings, welcome back for another video. Thanks for joining me and I want to thank you guys for your support and your patience. I know the last month or so, especially, my videos have been a little bit uh, few and far between. And so I just want to give you a little bit of an explanation of why that has been. And let you know I have a lot of content that I'm ready to put out. I just got to get it all edited and put out. And I'm at a point I think I can do that. You'll have to excuse me for being out of breath. I came on a trail run this morning. It's up here in the beautiful inland northwest. Got to take advantage of nature. It rejuvenates us. At least it does me. So I came up for a trail run. What I want to talk about today is the counter economy. You know, if you don't want to wear a mask, you don't want to have a, a get a vaccine, get a mRNA gene therapy poke. If you don't want that, and you still want to be able to go shop, and do all the things you love to do, things are going to change drastically for you. Unless you're willing to fake a passport or something like that and be dishonest. Personally, I don't want to do that. I can't justify that. I have many reasons for that. But I just can't do that. I'd rather stand in the truth. Moving on, what the counter economy is about is about establishing an economy where we don't have to do that, where we don't have to wear masks, where we don't have to have a vaccine passport or a chip or whatever they come up with to prove that we have the right shot and we're all up to date in order to be able to carry on lives as we see fit. That's not freedom, that's slavery. So the idea of this is agorism. I've talked about it before on my Alternate Economy Wednesday shows, which I am gonna be bringing back now that this counter economy exchange that I created here in Spokane uh, is going. The footage you're seeing in the, in the big screen is footage of the last counter economy exchange that we had here in Spokane. And what it is, is a way for us to connect as community members, as neighbors, as friends, and be able to exchange goods that we have without having to ask permission and get permits or anything like that. That brings me to the next item. The first one I did was a couple of weeks ago, and I had people asking me how I set it up, what the organization was, 
how I got permits and things like that. Uh, that's the point of this, is we're free people. We don't have to ask permission to be free and to survive, to get the things we need, to exchange them with our friends, and to make connections within our community. We don't have to ask permission to do that. We're free people. So the organization was just me over the last several months connecting with people in my community who were nervous about the future and their freedom to be able to shop where they want and do what they want without hurting other people in the future. We wanted to be able to get the products and the things that we want, just everyday things, soap, toothpaste, plants for our gardens, services that we may need, HVAC services, solar services, things like that. We wanted to be able to get them without having to go through a corporation that does business with the government that makes them kowtow and do all, all these evil things like force their workers to get vaccinations if they don't want to wear masks at work and things like that. So my point is in this rambling is you don't have to ask permission. You just pick a park, you make connections with people, and then you pick a date and you pick a place and you say, let's do it. You guys bring what you have, I'll bring what I have. And we'll make sure everybody has what we need. And so that's what we started doing. And the first weekend we had five vendors. I think actually we only had five vendors the second weekend. But one of them didn't show up the second weekend and we got a new vendor. So there it's like we have six vendors already. I, mean, I hesitate calling them vendors, but for, the, for right now I don't have anything else to call them. So that's what we'll call them. Right here by a little stream. This is Liberty Creek. Runs into Liberty Lake. So again, my point is, if we want to be able to do this and we want to be here for each other and support each other, we don't have to ask permission. Just abide by the non-aggression principle. Don't hurt anyone or threaten to hurt anyone. Don't damage or steal anyone else's property or don't defraud anyone. Unless they have violated that same principle against you or some of your friends and, and they need help. And so the last thing is, uh, people ask me how I got it started. Like I said, I just built a little bit of connections within my community of other people that thought like I did. And then how, I literally, after trying for a couple of months actually, I literally just picked a date and a place on my own and made a flyer and posted it. I posted it on Freedom Cells in my area, the Columbia Plateau Freedom Cells and People's Rights for Area 8 in Washington, which is the Spokane area. I just posted it there. Posted it on Facebook, even though I hate that. Posted it on Float.app, Hive, those kind of places and got the word out and people showed up and people are excited about it. I get several emails every week asking about it so that's good. So my answer to how, how I did it is I just did it. I just opened up Microsoft Publisher. I'm horrible at graphic design but I just made a flyer up and I started posting the flyer and getting the word out. Now moving on to what we have available at the exchange currently. So the first week we had, let's see, get this right, we had uh, fresh made tortillas, we had breakfast burritos, we had honey, we had plants for sale, uh, we had uh, rabbit services both for meat and for breeding, uh, we had freeze dried food available, uh, we had some creative homemade signs available. And last but definitely not least is we had some natural health products available. Uh, my friends and I, uh, we did an exchange uh, for some freeze-dried food uh, for some elderberry tincture. So that's very important and that was available as well. Now this weekend we had pretty much all those same things except we also had some uh, fresh eggs available so that was nice to see. Hopefully we see more of that kind of stuff. And I actually made the breakfast burritos that I've been making. I made a trade with one of the other vendors and was able to secure the tortillas. So I made breakfast burritos with fresh homemade tortillas from one of the other vendors. So that was a big score. Also, as I'm gonna let my friend Sam here let you guys know, we had a big success on the very first uh, exchange of the very first uh, day we did this. So I'm just gonna let him tell you real quick. We have to commemorate Sam. He made the first sale of the market and he did it in, in cryptocurrency. cryptocurrency. So that brings me to another point. Uh, in, order to, in order to exchange goods with each other, you can barter and actually exchange goods. Like uh, I did some cookies for some burritos with Sam, so that worked out good. 
Uh, we also encourage you to exchange cryptocurrency instead of using fiat currency. If you do want to use fiat currency, uh, I would encourage you to do uh, the gift system. Uh, for example, if someone wanted some of the freeze-dried uh, food that I offer, let's say for example, you wanted some freeze-dried chicken teriyaki that we make. If someone gave me a gift of six dollars of fiat currency, then as a thank you I would send them a package of my freeze-dried chicken teriyaki. So we have to think outside the box how our government, the ruling class or the predator class, keeps us under their thumb. It's by these rules of getting permits and all that kind of stuff. So if we keep away from doing those and keep away from the language that makes them think that they can use force on us, then we can be as safe as possible anyways and still thrive as a free community helping each other. A couple of other things I want to point out is both of the exchanges so far and in future exchanges I plan on keep doing this is I've been making breakfast burritos. Now they're free to anyone who wants one. I do encourage you to give me a gift in my gift jar to allow me to keep doing this for the future. Uh, so far I've started out with making 40 breakfast burritos every morning and whatever I give out I give out and whatever I don't give out I take into downtown Spokane with some friends and we hand them out to homeless people in downtown Spokane. So the last two weekends we've done this at the exchange. Uh, we've handed out uh, roughly 20 burritos every morning to homeless people, give or take. I think the first weekend it was maybe 22, the second weekend it was like 19. Uh, so we are helping out our community, not just ourselves, but we're helping out our community as well. We've confirmed that we're going to have some new energy bars available, as well as some homemade teriyaki sauce. And there is rumor that maybe not the next weekend, but soon there might be some uh, home-brewed kombucha available as well as some other fermented products which are going to be very important as the food supply gets more and more restricted in the future and we need to be able to preserve the food we have and save it. Well, I hope you guys got something out of this video. If you guys are interested in creating something like this counter economy exchange in your own area, uh, I will be doing another video. Uh, send me an email to cpfreemarket at protonmail.com if you're interested. I'm just going to do a short video, just kind of going in more detail about what I did to set it up. I make it sound like it was pretty simple in this, and it was really, but just to give people an idea what I did in more detail, I'll do, I'll do another video, just a quick video. So if you're interested in that, like I said, send an email to cpfreemarket at protonmail.com, and I'll send you a link to that video when I get it done. It should be in the next couple days, because I want other people to get a market like this going if they want in their own area. Thank you for supporting my work. Independent thought and journalism are under attack. If you want to fight censorship and promote independent thinking and freedom, we need your support. It's not just me. All truth-minded content creators are getting pushed off of the most popular and censorship-loving social media platforms. You can support me by making a donation of cryptocurrency. I have multiple wallets listed in the description of every video. If you still love your international bankster's fiat currency, I have links to PayPal, Venmo, and Cash App listed as well. If you're unable to donate in that fashion, consider signing up for Library, 3Speak, Hive, Steemit, DTube, or Mines using the links below and earn some crypto for yourself and me by using my affiliate links. Then you and I can both be earning decentralized cryptocurrency for you simply watching and interacting with my content.